Late last week, Wolfenstein Youngblood released across all current platforms, including the PC. And thus far, we've had a chance to take a look at the PC and PS4 versions, but what about Switch and Xbox One? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to discuss, and to do that, I am joined by my good friend and colleague, Richard Ledbetter. Hello there, John. Uh, Wolfenstein, surely? Yes, indeed. We are going to look at <laughs> Wolfenstein, which is even more fitting than usual for this episode, since uh, I've been playing it in German on the Switch. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this is an interesting one. It's it's a new game, but considering that Wolfenstein 2 la- launched not so long ago, uh, this is a little different. It's more of a co-op game this time. And there's some loot elements in it, and it's and as a result, the gameplay is a little different. And even Arcane Studios uh, was in, they were involved this time, and you can kind of feel that in the level design. The level design is more uh, thoughtful and interesting thus far, in comparison. So, on that sense, the game is fascinating. I don't necessarily love the forced co-op stuff, but it's it's cool. Mm-hmm. So, in the um, PC video, you were talking about this being kind of like, almost like an expansion pack. And I guess I'm reminded of those older style Quake expansion packs where they were really trying to do something different with the game. Does that hold up for this? That's actually a very good comparison. You're right. All the old id games used to have retail expansion packs uh, often created by different developers that were almost full-fledged games in terms of overall sense scale Uh, and that's kind of the case here i don't know how long this is but it does seem to be quite beefy despite being sold at a lower price Mm -hmm. well yeah it is a lower price isn't it because i saw it on uh, the xbox store for 30 dollars but it's 40 dollars if you have the buddy system the deluxe edition which allows you to invite people to join you for the entire duration of the game, but they can't play it on their own. That's exactly right. And that's a a smart idea. Mm -hmm, So so yeah, it's a cool looking game, but uh, I guess I was curious, obviously, about the technical improvements. Wolfenstein 2, the new (laughs) Colossus, was was a really impressive game on Xbox One X. Um, It hit around the time of Xbox One X, if I recall. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and although it had some slowdown issues at first, they patched it, and in the end, if you use the aggressive dynamic resolution option, it was very, very stable. And then, of course, much later, we got the Switch version, which, right. you know, it's compromised exactly as you would expect, but uh, ultimately kind of an impressive achievement. Yeah, that's the thing, really, isn't it? I mean, we've got the top-end console experience here with Xbox One X, and it is a really impressive game. Um, And then you've got the Switch version, which is, you know, obviously massively downgraded in comparison, but impressive in its own right. Yeah, so I guess first I kind of touch on some of the resolution stuff, which is vaguely similar to the previous release, but there's some good news and some bad news, I suppose, on the Switch side. Uh, I find that, and I think the Switch version of Wolf 2 was patched for this as well, but I haven't looked back at it. The dynamic resolution appears to be less aggressive. So when playing in docked, it does actually wind up coming in at 720p a lot more often. And yes, it does go below, and I've seen like 684p and the like, and perhaps even lower, but in general, it does seem to stick closer to this higher end, or the upper bounds. So it's still blurry, uh, and the checkerboard-like artifacts are still visible in the motion blur. Um, but it is a bit... It's its not nearly as uh, fuzzy as the p- previous release. And the same holds true for Portable as well, which is predictably lower resolution on average, uh, often in, I guess, the 540p range or so. Uh, but I haven't seen anything like 360p or anything like that, and certainly nothing like Ark Survival Evolved. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because it suggests that something has happened on the Switch side that makes it more optimal. I'm kind of interested in trying this one out on my uh, exploited Switch to see what they're doing with the GPU and CPU clocks there. Maybe I'll get around to that at some point. Yeah, I'd be curious to see that as well. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, with dynamic resolution, it's always difficult to get a perfect understanding of what the resolution is at any one point. But based on anecdotal evidence or just playing the game and looking at my capture, it does seem to be sharper overall. So that's good. 
Xbox One, though. Yeah, let's talk about that because um, that's not quite as solid as it as the new Colossus. Am I right? Yeah. So looking back at the original piece that Tom did, uh, this was uh, when it was just released. The Xbox One X dropped as low as 1656p or so, but this was before they patched in the option to do aggressive dynamic resolution scaling, which obviously dropped even further. So this game still retains those three options. You can either run it in native 4K mode, you can do dynamic resolution scaling on, or you can do aggressive. But I've noticed that even when just using the on setting, it will drop to 1440p, which is lower than the upper or the lower bounds previously. Uh, and it does seem to just generally not hold that higher resolution as often as, as the previous game. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's, it still looks good enough, but it does seem a tad softer overall as a result of this, especially when using the aggressive mode, which is my preferred mode uh, for performance reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Um, obviously, uh, with Wolfenstein 2, uh, running natively, you could see uh, performance drop into the 30s, and then dynamic was the standard, then aggressive came along later, and aggress aggressive basically eliminated most of the drops. It was mostly a 60 frames per second experience. So how do the modes play out this time around on the X? So yeah, you're right. I finished the game on Xbox One X with aggressive and it was almost completely locked. Whereas this time I also started with aggressive and right away uh, there are dips, even with this, even in somewhat confined areas. Now keep in mind, I haven't had time to play that far into the game but the fact that even in these very early firefights here, we're already seeing drops into the 50s with aggressive is a tad worrisome, uh, I must mm. admit. <laughs> yeah. And so it just doesn't feel quite as consistent as the previous release. And of course, if you drop it to just on, uh, it's relatively similar, actually, um, That's which is odd. Uh, the same sequence I tested, there's this battle here right at the beginning that seems to stress each system for some reason but yeah i mean even when just using the regular on setting it's not that different compared to aggressive and neither one is locked so that's disappointing mm. yeah yeah that is uh, an interesting state of affairs is the content like more challenging or than, than uh, it's, the new colossus it's a maybe a more open-ended game uh and of course it has the co-op element so maybe it's related to that it's difficult to say and, of course, predictably, the native 4K mode. <laughs> uh, that seems to average around 40 frames per second most of the time. So, again, I've talked to some people that have played further in the game, and apparently there's some sections that start to dip really hard much later in the game. So even then, uh, this isn't the worst it can get, apparently. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's go back to the Switch version, because yes. obviously uh, if you stack up... Well, what we've got here is essentially the top-tier console version, uh, apparently, <laughs> and the Switch <laughs> version. And obviously, uh, there's got to be some visual hit there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's pretty much as it was last time. Um, you know, most, most or at least a good portion of the effects are there. You still have volumetric lighting, for instance, though it is, of course, very low res and kind of jittery looking. You can kind of see what I mean here. Uh, it's not the case in the other platforms. Ambient occlusion appears to have gone missing. Uh, at least I can't really see any when you compare it to Xbox One X here. Um, shadow quality is reduced. There's more artifacts than that, and shadow coverage isn't as good. Uh, the textures are all much lower resolution. They're just blurrier overall. Uh, screen space reflections appear to be missing as well. Um, so yeah, I mean... When you combine all of that and everything just kind of... It lacks the soft lighting and soft look of the Xbox version as well. There's just, you know, it's obvious that a lot of things had to be sacrificed to get it onto the Switch. But even still, it looks like like Wolfenstein. So, I can't, you know, I... We it is can't what it shift is. the presence of Alex Batalia. This is uh, just outrageous. Yes, we... It, 
ever since then, you know, it's I, I although I'm more of a fan of the Panzer Faust or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, re- returning to the to the <laughs> to the matter at hand, uh, it still has the volumetrics and whatnot, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's mm-hmm. all there. So it's really just losing lost the AO, the SSR, and things like that, and everything else just kind of toned down. And just like the last time, it does look better in handheld mode overall. It is blurrier, but because of the small screen, uh, it's a lot less noticeable. Playing this on a 4K 65-inch screen really reveals the flaws. It it looks lower resolution than what the pixel counts actually are, to my eyes. My f- so it's one of those situations where it kind of depends on uh, the size of your screen a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about Switch performance. Yes. Um, obviously, it will be a 30 FPS game, right? That is exactly right. It is once again capped at 30 frames per second. And, um, yeah, so during most combat sequences, it doesn't quite hold that. And it was similar in the last one, but I, it's kind of, it's possibly about the same, maybe a little worse. I haven't seen anything as low as I saw in the original, but... During many of the firefights, you're just looking at in the 25 frames per second region kind of average. And that happens a lot, so it doesn't feel completely smooth. Uh, it's playable, but yeah, it just doesn't have the that perfect 30 FPS fluidity. I say perfect, even though it's 30 FPS, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, what about frame pacing? Because that was an issue. Where exactly. Been... So, um, as we've seen in some instances... Frame pacing can become a problem when the system is under heavy load. So during the exploration moments or quiet scenes, the frame pacing is perfect. But as soon as things start to dip and struggle a little bit, even if it's not dipping so much below 30, you start to get these uh, spikes on the frame time graph above 33 milliseconds. Right, got you. Uh Uh-huh. Um, well, it's, it's kind of interesting turnout, really, isn't it? Because uh, it seems, from what you're saying, that the Switch version possibly marginally improved over Wolfenstein the New Colossus. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and at the same time, on the Xbox, it seems to be marginally worse. Yes, but perhaps with a qualifier. So the Switch version is a little bit sharper overall and maybe slightly improved, but you have to keep in mind that in general it does run pretty poorly uh, in the sense that you're almost always under 30 frames per second during most scenes of the game. It's really only those quiet moments that seem to run around 30 FPS constant, but otherwise you're just constantly dropping below 30 FPS. But it's not really all that different from the previous release either and since the resolution is better it kind of is improved whereas on xbox at its worst it's still light years beyond the switch version but yeah it does feel a little less consistent overall and the native 4k option really isn't great yeah i've always thought of the uh, native 4k option in uh, in these games as kind of like the sort of thing yeah the sort of thing you'd engage when your Scarlet Machine arrives and see how it holds up on back combat. That's kind of the way I see it. I certainly wouldn't play it uh, uh, on, on Xbox One X in this way. To be fair though, uh, it does actually work better than I expected with uh, FreeSync, if you remember. I haven't tested the specific version, but we tested Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, with a FreeSync monitor and it looked great, if you recall. <laughs> yeah, I I do recall. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, maybe I'll give it a whirl on that because uh, I do indeed have a free sync. That's screen, right. Uh, and I'm I'm actually quite interested to see whether Microsoft has actually changed the implementation because it was problematic on many games, and uh, we actually found only a few that worked really well. But the new Colossus was one of them, and you'll note that I didn't see uh-huh, more that's right. then. A couple, a couple other things though. First of all, uh, we got this game pretty late in the week, except for the PC version, so we didn't get a chance to look at the Xbox One S version this time. And in fact, I had issues purchasing it in Germany for some reason, on Switch specifically, and ended up getting a the German version. And unlike every other game, the German version is exclusively in German. Uh, and they removed all of the Nazi symbolism. So you get these generic symbols instead. And it's just, it, it's, 
it's very weird and a little bit surreal playing this game in German, I must admit. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I was reading the, uh, the, the FAQ for the game and uh, they refer to the game as being sanitized for the German market, which is an interesting choice of phrase. Yeah, I was under the impression that uh, it was now possible to sell uh, t games without that, so to speak, but perhaps the symbol itself is too far, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I mean, in this way, if you get the German version, you are getting the German version. and There's nothing else to it. I remember even with uh, the second game, uh, I, we got a review code for that. and I had to jump through a bunch of VPN hoops uh, on the Switch hardware specifically. I couldn't even do it through the website. Uh, they really don't want you to play that regular version here. But that's exactly what I've done with the Xbox version. So, you know... <laughs> Yeah, crazy stuff. But that's kind of about it, really, isn't it? I mean, obviously, we really wanted to look at this one as it's a key title, but, you know, it is uh, more of an offshoot, I guess. Yeah. An offshoot of the, of the new Colossus, Pretty with much. the co-op mechanic being the, I guess, the primary draw this time around. That's exactly right. It's, uh, it's a bit of a different thing, and it's cool. So I'm eager to kind of play a little more, and yeah, it's fun in co-op as well, so... But... Uh, if you're looking at the console versions, I mean, you kind of know what to expect now. It's a little different than the previous release, but not much. <laughs> so I think that'll that'll do it for now. So thanks for joining me, Rich. It's been an absolute pleasure. Wonderful. And if you guys enjoy this video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell, and follow us over on Twitter for more Wolfenstein. And until next time, this is John and Rich signing off. And the spirit of Alex. And the spirit of Alex. <laughs>